Good evening and welcome to The Bottom Line. News about your neighborhood and its condition. News that will allow you to make informed decisions. From downtown to Dover and everywhere in between, it's news that reaches the residents of Wilmington and Newcastle County. News that's real, relevant, revealing. Yes, it's the bottom line. Again, good evening. My name is Nicole DeSorette, and I am so happy that you are joining us this evening. As always, we have a show that is just packed with information. You won't want to miss anything. Tonight, we're going to be talking about jobs for young people ages 18 to 29. We are going to be talking about Sexual Assault Awareness Month, which is the month of April. We're also be going to be talking about what happens tomorrow when you go to the polls. And you are going, aren't you? Of course you are. And we're, we, we can't finish the show today without addressing the tragedy at Howard High. And our condolences go out to the family of Amy Joyner Francis. I'm going to cut my remarks really short today, but this is what I want you to know. I was, was thinking about what to say to open the show, and whether you are joining us for the first time or whether you started with us seven months ago, this show is called The Bottom Line for a reason, because we're going to bring you the bottom line. You know the people in the crew. You know Miss Deneen. You know Mr. Shakeen. You know Elder Ty. And of course, you know our captain, State Rep Charles Potter. We are bringing you news and we are telling you like it is. We are shooting not only from the hip, but we are shooting from the heart. We are telling you the things that you need to hear and hopeful that you are going to be inspired to make changes. Change isn't going to happen by osmosis. We have to step up to the plate. We need to stand up. We need to speak up. And the bottom line is the show to move you in that direction. So again, please stay tuned. Great show tonight, and you won't want to miss a thing. So that's enough of me. I'm going to turn it over to Studio B with State Representative Potter as well as Elder Ty Johnson. Take it away, guys. In the face of the violence that we've been uh, experiencing for the past 400 years, is actually doing our people a disservice. In fact, it's a crime. It's a crime. Oh, I'm off. Okay. Get Bless you, everybody, everywhere. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. It's the public enemy. What's the L? What's the L? Number one. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with the captain, uh, state representative. That Pop. was your theme song? That's my theme song, brother. So you where'd it go? You did not talk to my agent? No, I talked to your agent. Okay. Lad, look, 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 you all. I want to say hello to everybody where I love you. Mm -hmm. And uh, thanks, uh, uh, Mr. Nicole, for that wonderful opening. Oh, that was wonderful. As you can see, I'm wearing my pen. I got and one on you. We're going to oh, talk, right, talk right about the pen in just a little bit. I'm not going <laughs> to mm -hmm. steal their thunder. That's right. But I'm a full-fledged supporter. I want you to know that, ladies. Mm -hmm. I'm a full-fledged supporter of assault, sexual assault prevention. We Lord did a proclamation me. down in the House of Representatives did on you? sexual assault. Yes, we Wonderful. did. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. It's going to be heavy tonight. It's going to be yeah. heavy tonight. Mm -hmm. Listen, never meant to do you any. Never meant. Oh, Lord. Did you? What's going on? What's going on? Oh, come on, man. <laughs> For those of you who've been asleep all this time, my friend Prince Rogers Nelson oh. has transitioned. And purple rain, purple rain. Oh, Lord. See, and they say that Prince has all kind of songs in his vault. They don't know who's going to take over the estate. That's right. But I'm saying, to God be the glory. Oh, 
and a lot of folks thinking it was drug activity, but they said, no, 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 yeah. cut that out, cut that out. Prince was a vegan, he wasn't on any drugs, so the investigation is still going on. Right, yeah, So I, heard I that. love it. What and a tremendous loss, Prince. Purple Rain, my wife loved it, and a lot of women really love Prince. Let's get crazy, let's get wild. And you know, that? he did a um, charity event in Baltimore last year for the victims. You remember that? Yes, sir. And what, He what, was a giver. You know what I love about uh, Prince? Mm -hmm. Prince was the kind of guy that did things for community and just ordinary people yeah. and would never say anything. Not one thing. Not one thing about mm -hmm. it. And then, listen, listen. <laughs> Me and Mrs. Mrs. Joe. Oh, my God. Remember gosh. that? Remember that? You better keep your day job, oh, man. Oh, Lord, Lord, Lord. <laughs> Billy Paul Billy has Paul. transitioned as well. That was back in our day, man, Mrs. Jones. She young people Ooh, wouldn't know anything about that. They don't know Shaquem. about that. Shaquem. <laughs> he wouldn't know anything about me and Mrs. Jones. Got a thing going on, Billy <laughs> Paul, Philly Zone. And we had a lot of uh, folks here, mm -hmm. females, who used to back him up, travel all over yes, the world. Yes, they so did. Carmen yeah. and all the rest mm -hmm. of the gang, uh, God bless you. We are praying for you. And then a horrific, horrific tragedy. Uh, shocking. If you hadn't heard by now, we lost uh, one of our young people mm -hmm. and at How uh, Howard um, Technical School yep. over a fight and yeah. invoked Howard Tech voc uh, Vocational School. And um, her name was Amy Joyner Francis. Mm -hmm. So to the family of Amy, Amy Joyner Francis, mm -hmm. uh, we are praying for you. We're going to pause um, for just a moment. Mm -hmm. Let's pause for a moment of yes. silence. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that was for the family and all those connected. See, what young people don't realize, that every time something happens like this, mm -hmm. these folks are connected to someone else. That's right. So not only does the mother or the father, if they're blessed to have a mother or father, do they grieve, mm -hmm. but aunts are grieving, uncles are grieving, friends are grieving. Everybody. And then mm -hmm. there's always what I call collateral damage. Mm -hmm. There's always the folks who participated in the incident. Oh, yeah. It in affects the incident. so many lives. It and you affects know what? so many lives. During the round table, Shaquem and uh, Deneen, they're going to really get deeper into that. So I don't want to steal all that thunder. Well, let's talk. Well, what do you think we should be doing? Well, there's a lot that can be done, but I want to hold that round table. Let me do this. <clears throat> let's just gears. We are in primary season. You know, it's time to get out and vote tomorrow. Uh, as you all know, last night I was on the show with the Honorable Sam Guy. We talked about the primary. We got to meet the President Clinton, oh, Bill Clinton. Oh, stop the press. <laughs> Bill stop Clinton the press. at the uh, Hollywood Grill. And, you I'll know, be voting tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Maybe Nicole got the call. Uh, Wait did, to Ed. Ed, did, Ed, you, get did the you get the call, Ed, yeah. uh, that the Vice President was in town at the Holiday Grill? Hey, look. I mean, you did. <laughs> oh, I'm the only See one that did. But why are we doing that? If uh, Ivan could show some pictures, I'm going to share some pictures of the day's <laughs> event. Hillary Clinton was in town. The Clintons are in town. People were thinking. Now, this first shot you see is a shot of the crowd with Hillary, with our governor. And, um, boy, she has some very inspirational things to say today. We're going to show some other pictures for you. There's one outside with uh, me, my wife, the Speaker of the House, the Majority Leader, um, State Rep Bolden, the other young lady in the um, pink, she did the picture of President Obama, a pre picture of President Clinton, and I told her, look, you got to do a picture of me as well. I, so I, she's going to do one of me. I would suspect. <laughs> so <laughs> then you got, okay, there's more pictures of the crowd. I mean, it was crowded out there, but it was a great time. And, and there's one with um, the governor. Uh, then you got Miss Edwards there who did the introduction mm. to Hillary Clinton. So get out and vote tomorrow. Please, and, I, please, and I'm very please. biased on this one, and I told you that. I'm supporting Hillary Clinton because she has the experience. She's a two-term senator. She's the Secretary of State. She's been in the White House before, so she already knows her way around. She knows how to deal with Congress. And she's talking about concrete things, 
You know, she's talking about supporting education, minimum wage. You know, you can't talk about pie in the sky and you're not getting there, but we got to deal with reality. So we want all those Bernie uh, Sanders people to come on over and join us after tomorrow, you know, because there's a place mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. What do you think about this primary? Well, I want to say, first of all, uh, thank you for all that you do. And thank mm -hmm. you for your wife who works hard um, to sustain um, everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. And all of those who just work behind the scenes. A lot of times oh, yes. folks don't know mm -hmm. that bringing these uh, candidates in is a lot of work. So yes. if they can work to get people mm -hmm. of this caliber right here in Delaware, mm -hmm. you know, we are just a stone throw, right? And, and you and, know what? We're going to say that we had a big event. And we brought uh, Mayor Nutter in. You Absolutely. were there at that event at my oh, office. I, I got that it call. Was, it was huge. It was huge. Right, right. I got and that And tonight, call. I sent out a robocall throughout the entire 1st District telling people to get out and vote. But you know what? We're going to take and send this over to the other studio with Nicole and them because, boy, we got so much to talk about in so little time. Don't so get out and vote don't tomorrow. Don't you tell the truth. What's the truth? Denise and Nicole's here tonight, and you scared to death. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go over to Studio C. <laughs> I gotta watch myself. <laughs> so, with no further ado, there you go. You got it. <laughs> the beauty of live television. You never know what's going to be said. So. You gotta love it. <laughs> well, it's almost time for school to get out. Yep. My children are actually off today, so I'm a little taken back by that. I actually, I have to start paying attention, I guess. I didn't even know. Oh, you were one of those parents. <laughs> I'm one of those, whatever that means. <laughs> but they're off today and tomorrow. I'm like, geez, can they yeah, finish the yeah. year? <laughs> when I was teaching, always there would be one parent to bring their child to school uh -huh. when the school was closed. So that's what I meant by Oh, no, I don't do that. Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> no, I do check, but it might be the night before, okay. but I'll check. got it, got it. <laughs> so what we want to do is provide some information for, I call them children, but they're actually young adults, mm -hmm. ages 18 to 29, who are looking for employment. Yes, which is so needed in today's climate. Uh, you have tons of people that are younger than 18 and older than 29 that are looking for employment um, and are having trouble. Just recently, I was talking to an individual who said that they were just recently laid off, mm -hmm. um, them and 8,000 others wow. um, So in corporate. So yeah, definitely times are shifting right. and people are looking for jobs. There's tons of people who are eager and excited about getting a new job or going to a new field. Well, then so. I hope those eager and excited people are watching the bottom I line. I hope so too. Because we have a connection for you tonight. In the studio, we have Miss Donna Tony, who is representing an organization called Generation. So thank you so much for being here, Donna. Thank you for having me. Tell us a little more about Generation. Um, Generation is a new nonprofit organization that's new to Wilmington. And what we do is we train young people for entry-level positions, mm -hmm. and, in, and we stay with them. Um, we stay with them, they enter the entry level position and it's to hope they get into the managerial and supervisor roles mm -hmm. of that company. Great. And when I met you a few weeks ago, you were telling me about a couple of programs that are available and the benefits mm -hmm. for these programs is just unbelievable. Yes, so what are yes. we going to talk about first, CNA or customer service? Well, let's talk about customer service. Customer first. service. <laughs> okay. Customer service because I'm personally involved in customer service. Uh -huh. So I am the mentor of one of the customer service programs um, that is held at Springfield College, 1007 the Moore's Building. Um, we deal with, every, it's not just textbook type of learning. We deal with PEC skills, mm -hmm. teach the students soft skills. We do a lot of role playing. Um, it's easy to be the customer, but it's different when you're in that manager position or you in the team lead position. So um, it's definitely a learning process for the students. Um, we do resume building, okay. um, mock interviews. I have um, owners of, you know, business owners come in to speak with the students to let them know what does customer service look like? What are employers looking for when they, when we say customer service? What it is, it, you know, what it looks like. Mm -hmm. So. Right. And that's a six week program, correct? That's a six week program, yes. Now some of the benefits 
well, number one, you get a stipend. Yes, you get a stipend. Um, it's not a paycheck. It's not, you know, a lot of money, but it's a thank you for you investing in your own future. Mm -hmm. So it might start off, well, it does start off maybe $75 for the first week. $75 for the second week and then it actually grows on that six week you'll get up to $200 mm -hmm. um, tardiness you know everything that you would need to keep employment that's what we do so you have to look professional you have to be on time if not you know your stipend gets affected ah, so so real world real, real world, world experiences issues. yes okay Go ahead. Yeah, so what type of individual are you guys looking for? I know that the age is from 18 to 29, but what else should a person have uh, before they come to um, see you guys? A desire okay. to be in retail, hospitality, customer service, which and is so broad, but mm -hmm. you know, a desire to be in one of those positions. Um, we also do a reading proficiency and we do a math proficiency test. Um, and they have to pass a drug test. Okay. Okay. And so it really is open to anyone. Anyone. Anyone who's hungry and ready to do something with their Absolutely. life. Absolutely. And that's important Absolutely. because on your flyer, it says that the program is tough, the expectations are uh -huh. high. Very so high. you need to approach this six week program as if it's your full time job. job. Mm -hmm. So that's really, really important. And in addition to the stipend, talk about that 100% guarantee. One one hundred percent guarantee an interview. Okay. But like I said in the beginning, I am a mentor of the customer service program. So we actually stay with the student up to a year. Mm -hmm. So my job is not only to help you get that interview, stick with the job. If you have problems on your job, I call you. Continue. Right now, I'm calling my past students at least twice a week, asking them how they're doing. If they have a problem, we're able to. It might be childcare then it's my job to go out and help them with child care. Mm -hmm. So you're really removing all of the excuses. Removing or wow. just removing or the, the, barriers. Mm -hmm. the, the barriers. The barriers. The that's barriers. a good word. Mm -hmm. That's a good word. Mm -hmm. So that's the customer service piece. Mm -hmm. Can we switch over to the CNA piece? Yes. So the CNA program is an eight week program. It's held at Dell Tech. Um, do not offer a stipend for a CNA, but what we do offer is your scrubs, are paid for books, shoes, and we also pay for your state boards. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's huge. It is. And I think that uh, we definitely want the viewers to understand that this is a free program. This is free Absolutely training. Free. And so they're like like you said, they're removing the excuses mm -hmm. because there's no longer an excuse of why you don't have a job. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so you can get that training for 100% free. The customer service, just to recap, offers a stipend, a weekly stipend. Yes. And then the CNA, your scrubs, your books, your boards, shoes, mm -hmm. shoes mm -hmm. are all paid for. Wow. What what camera am I looking at? <laughs> <laughs> They're all paid for. And the CNA offers 100% job placement. 100% mm -hmm. job placement. So let's talk about who are who are the partners of Generation? Um, St. Francis. I'm not really too familiar with mm -hmm. it because that's not my program, but St. Francis is one of our partners. Okay. For, but um, you guys have a list of partners. Yes. yes. So mm -hmm. when you talk about this guarantee, you're talking about individuals that are working with you to find placement for these yes. individuals. CNAs are in need right mm -hmm. now. So. Okay. Wow. Wow. So that's an open market open where market, there's, a, yes. there's a growing need. And it's still also the um, math and reading proficiency, background check, you know, cus um, drug testing. Mm -hmm. right. That's great. That's great. Absolutely. So, of course, we can't share all of this information because we're getting ready to switch over to Mr. Ed with the sports news. We can't give you all of this information without telling you how to find out more information Absolutely. and register. So, unfortunately, we can't put it at the bottom of the screen. We'll get that fixed shortly. So you got to pay attention. The website is generationinitiative.org, and I'll spell that for you. G-E-N-E-R-A-T-I-O-N, -E -E Generation Initiative. Here's the challenge. <laughs> I-N-I-T-I-A-T-I-V-E dot org. Apply now. Spaces may be limited in the CNA program as well as in the customer service program. 
So again, generationinitiative.org for more information. Donna, thank you so much thank for you so much. letting people thank know you. that there's something out there. Yes. Six weeks is not a long time. Mm -hmm. Eight weeks isn't mm -hmm. a long time. You can do it. You can do it. So yeah, thank absolutely. you again. Thank you. And thank uh, we you so wish much. you the best. Thank you. All right, thank we're going you. to go to a short break, and then we're going over to Ed with what's happening in the sports world. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the sports segment of the show. Before I get started, I want to say, give a special shout out to two of my best friends who um, I had the pleasure of attending their wedding party uh, Saturday afternoon. That was Paul and Yasmin Jackson. Uh, many years to them, good years for them to come. And uh, once again, congratulations to Yasmin and Paul Jackson. Got two breaking stories I want to break. Um, from one, the first one is from the from New England Patriots, NFL. Tom Brady's four-game suspension for Inflategate was upheld by the Third Circuit Court of Appeals. New England quarterback must serve four-game suspension at the start of the season. New England will open the season at the Arizona Cardinals on September the 11th, followed by three home games against the Miami Dolphins, the Houston Texans, and followed by the Buffalo Bills. Moving on to the NHL. After falling behind two games to none to the Washington Capitals, or three, I'm sorry, three games to none to the Washington Capitals, the Philadelphia Flyers um, won two games in a row. Their season ended yesterday as the Caps defeated the Flyers 1-0, and they moving on to the um, NHL semis. The, the Capitals are now going to play uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins, who won their series against the New York Rangers four, four games to one. Uh, in the other series in the Eastern Conference, New, uh, New York Islanders, um, lead Florida three games to two. And Tampa Bay has won their series against Detroit uh, four games to one. In the Western Conference, Dallas is lead. Dallas won their series against Minnesota four games to two. St. Louis leading three. Chicago three games to two. Anaheim's leading Nashville three games to two. And San Jose has won their series against Los Angeles four games to one. Okay, moving on. Baseball. Former Baltimore Orioles. Uh, Jake Arrieta threw a no-hitter uh, against the Cincinnati Reds Thursday night, and uh, he only allowed six balls to be hit out of the infield on um, Thursday. That was tr truly amazing. As uh, the Chicago has won that won the game 16 to nothing. It was his first no-hitter of the, it was the first no-hitter of the season for major the major leagues, and uh, his second of Arrieta's career as he blanked the Dodgers two nothing on August the second. The standings. Baltimore Orioles are leading the East, American League East, 11 and 6. Chicago's leading uh, the Central at 13 and 6. The West, Oakland is leading 10 to 9. The, the National League, the East, Washington has the best record in the in, 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 um, American League. I mean, in, in baseball, all of baseball, they're 14 and 4. Chicago's 14 and 5, and they are they look real good. Chicago, they predicted to win it all this year. Los Angeles Dodgers are leading in the West at 12 and 7. Moving on to the NHL, I'm sorry, the NFL. The Philadelphia Eagles traded five draft picks to move from number eight to number two in the NFL draft. This draft is Thursday night. I don't know. I wouldn't trade no five players for one player in, this, in any draft because when you trade five players away uh, for one player, you don't know what you're getting until the player actually takes the field against other NFL players. You know, you, they might be good. They might be bad. You don't know what's going on with that. Uh, one thing about the um, – one thing I want to say, important signing, the Redskins signed former Panthers cornerback Norman. He, Josh Norman, he was supposed to be one of the best cornerbacks in the league as he was last year. This year's draft picks, number one, L.A. Rams, two, Philadelphia Eagles, three, San Diego Chargers, four, Dallas Cowboys, the five, Jacksonville Jaguars, six, Baltimore Ravings, seven, San Francisco, San Francisco 49ers, eight, Cleveland, they switched picks with Philadelphia, nine, the Tampa Bay Bucks, followed by 10, the New York Giants, as the NFL East has three teams in the top 10 it's going to pick. Moving on to the NBA, the Spurs and the Cleveland Cavaliers swept their first round opponents and move on to the semis. Cleveland's Kyrie Irving, Cleveland's Kyrie, Kyrie Irving has just been truly amazing or sensational as he hit back-to-back -back game winners of three-pointers in two separate games that swept Detroit Pistons right out of the playoffs. If Irving and Love stay healthy, they may win the East and give Golden State a run for their money if Golden State wins. The other breaking story I forgot to mention was Stephon Curry has a twisted left knee. He is going to be out for at least two weeks. 
and without Curry, I think they can do all right without him right now. However, I don't think they could win it all if they don't get Curry back. I see that the San Antonio Spurs cannot beat Golden State in the series as their nucleus is too old. And young boys are just taking over the league everywhere. Stephon Curry and Klay Thompson are the best backcourt in base in, in basketball. Those two guys are truly amazing. Uh, I want to I mentioned something else about the NBA. Um, the Miami Heat. I watched them play, and with their additions, they are just they got uh, Stoudemire from New York, Joe Johnson from the New Jersey Nets, Lou Aldang from Chicago, and Justice Winslow from the former champion Duke Blue Devils. They look pretty good because uh, Wade is playing, decided he wants to come and play now. So it looks like they might have some, um, they might give Cleveland trouble. And I wouldn't be surprised if they beat Cleveland in a seven game series. In closing out, I want to say that um, in a mixed martial arts, uh, Star McGregor, Scott McGregor, is saying that he is not, or Conor McGregor, I'm sorry, is not retiring as early reports have said he was going to do. And race fans, Dale Earnhardt wins NASCAR Infinity at the Richmond International Raceway yesterday. We're going to take a short break. Well, we're not going to take a break. We're going to move over to Nicole. Thank you, Ed. So today is April 25th, which means the month is pretty much gone. If you didn't know, and I'm sorry I didn't have an opportunity to bring it up earlier, but I did take a, a week off here and there. April is Jazz Appreciation Month, so we should have been doing something with jazz, something, but we didn't, so charge it to our heads and not our hearts. But it's also Sexual Assault Awareness and Prevention Month, and that was new information to me. One of the things I love about being a part of the Bottom Line crew is that it keeps me in learning mode. I enjoy doing the research and bringing it to you. And the other day at a health fair, I met a young lady by the name of Nancy McGee, who is connected to SAND, S-A-N-D, which is the Sexual Assault Awareness Network of Delaware. I invited her to the show, and guess what? She said yes, and she's here today looking beautiful and blue. How are you, Nancy? I'm good, thanks. And I'm convinced that you and Donna teamed up with the blue coordinates. That's what that I message. think. We did. So, sexual assault awareness and prevention. Yes. Let's just start with a definition of sexual assault because it's broader than what most people are thinking. Correct, correct. So, sexual assault is the large umbrella term. And underneath sexual assault, you will find the specific type of assaults as in rape, harassment, stalking, um, trafficking. There's several different types of, that, of, of agendas that fall under sexual assault. So sexual assault is a big umbrella term. Okay. What people think of it as rape, rape is one of the types of sexual assault. Okay, and I'm glad you clarified that. I did bring someone on last year who talked about human trafficking. Yes. And assaults, sexual assaults are happening all over the place at a greater degree than what most people are, are familiar with. So, um, so I appreciate you sharing this, this information. And what is your role with the organization in Delaware? So can you explain a little sure. bit about what you do? Sure. I am proudly the coordinator for the Sexual Assault Network of Delaware, which is an organization of many different professionals that comes together in order to bring awareness of sexual assault to Delawareans and to hopefully get folks on the track of how to begin to address prevention. So I coordinate many different agencies, uh, both private and uh, nonprofit throughout the state so that we can come together and address this as a unified issue. Great. And I know when we met a couple of weeks ago and we were having a conversation, you said that oftentimes people will say to you, I didn't even know you existed. That's because they didn't have a need for service. Didn't, no. And one yeah. of the things that is our mission here at the bottom line is we want to provide information so that if you need it, you mm -hmm. already have the contact number, you already have somewhere to go. Sure, sure. And that's important. Unfortunately, when it comes to sexual assault and rape, 
the majority of them go unreported. And that number increases greatly when you reach college campuses for a wide variety of reasons. And some of that is that they don't know where to go. And some of that is that they don't know who to trust or where the confidential information will go. We want to provide outreach so that individuals know, particularly when they are faced with one of the most traumatic events of their lives, if they have to deal with that, that the closer they hear somebody saying to them that this was not their fault, that this was a crime that happened to them, that there will be healing from this, those mean that that individual moves more quickly from being a victim into being a survivor. And being a survivor means that they start to take their own power back. In any sexual assault, what's happened is somebody has taken their power. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, they, it's, the terminology makes people think that this is about sexuality. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with sexuality. It's about power and control mm -hmm. all the time. Right. And so when you can watch somebody start to say, you know what, I, I'm taking my life back. I'm taking my power back there will not be somebody who is controlling me to that nature. That's such a gift. And they, the, there's many studies out there that show that individuals get there quicker if they have advocacy, if they have proper counseling, if they have resources available to them. So what SAN does is bring the awareness of what those things are and provide support, SAN provides support to the individual agencies as needed. That's great. And something special is happening this Wednesday, April 27th. Let's Absolutely. talk about that before we Absolutely. move back over to the other uh, studio. Uh, the state of Delaware, um, actually led in much by um, the Dover Air Base, is participating in the national objective of Denim Day. Now, Denim Day started about 10 years ago when a judge in Italy reversed a um, rape charge based upon the fact that he thought that she, it could not possibly have been raped because she was wearing jeans. What? I know. And I, even when I read that, I thought, well, okay, 10 years ago, let's hope we've, we've grown up since then. You know, let's hope we've moved forward since then. We did an awful lot of research. I had blessed with great interns, and they did a great amount of research. And what we found is, even as late as this past November, we had judges in the United States say, well, she was wearing skinny de jeans, and so you know she had to come out of those voluntarily. This could not have been rape. When we are basing guilt and innocence on what an article of clothing is, there's something drastically yeah. wrong with that picture. And so up and down Delaware, uh, we're encouraging everybody to wear denim on Wednesday. I would be so excited to see just a sea of blue denim statewide in the state of Delaware. Well, you can count me in. Excellent. I'll find some denim and I will proudly wear it because we need not continue to just sweep things under the rug. Right. And then it just gets moved from one generation to another generation right. with the secrets and the hurts and things like that. We need to talk about it. And it's a crime, as it you said. Crime. And it's it has crime. nothing to do with the type of clothing I have on. It doesn't have to do with what t clothing you have on. It doesn't have anything to do with, really, your age, what you look like. It's a crime of power and mm -hmm. control. And when, you know, the heartbreaking stories when we get to hear from victims when they, when they think that this is related to what their appearance is mm -hmm. or where they were or whether or not they are capable of making good decisions about people to hang out with. It's a, it's a power game, it's a, it's a control game, right. it's a crime, and it is not that victim's fault. And they have an opportunity to move forward if they get services. The tragedy is, I'm housed at Contact Lifeline, which is the statewide crisis hotline that's been around for 41 years, and we hear people call on that crisis line who 30 and 40 years ago were sexually assaulted and never got services and never got to lay that secret down. And to hear how that has destroyed their lives mm -hmm. is, is tremendously heartbreaking. So it, when I, I hear somebody who says, well, you know, I never told anybody this, but this happened to me 40 years ago, and you think, wow, what would have happened if somebody had been there with you that day? Right. And, you know, our objective is to get as close as we can to these victims so that they can start to heal and they can start to move forward. And then the other side of that coin is to be able to say, and what are we doing so that our communities know this is going to stop? Mm -hmm. And it's preventable. Sexual assault is preventable. Right. And I don't know if you know, but I'm actually a breast cancer survivor. Congratulations. And as I help other women 
who have traveled that same road, I believe that knowing that you're not alone is the very first step in the healing process. I agree. So if you are dealing with uh, some type of sexual assault or you know someone who is, there is help available in SAND, the Sexual Assault Awareness Network of Delaware. If you need to talk to someone, please call Contact Lifeline. It's a crisis helpline. That number is really simple, 302-761-9100. Again, 302-761-9100. Nancy, is that a 24-hour hotline? We're, Contact Lifeline is a 24-hour hotline, 365. 366 on leap years. Right, right. Yeah, that hotline gets answered all the time by some of the finest people you ever want to meet in the face of the earth. That's wonderful. Do you have any closing remarks? Um, I just want to encourage everybody to understand that this is a crime. It is preventable. And it's going to be preventable because one by one, people take a stand and say, no more, no more, no more violence. Thank you so much, Nancy. I, I really appreciate you being here. Thanks for inviting and, me. And um, they got the right person in this job. They certainly do. <laughs> thank you. I, I, I feel your passion. So thank you. And I am expecting the bottom line audience to have on their denim this Wednesday. Absolutely. I was Absolutely. about to say August, April 27th. <laughs> Join me this Wednesday for Denim Day. And wear teal for the rest of the month. That's our color. Great, great. Thanks again. Thanks. We are going to Mr. Shaquem and Miss Deneen to talk about our roundtable discussion. Take it away. Hello, hello, hello. Gosh, again, I so have painless. not seen you, you so in much. forever. It feels like ages. It has been ages. It has been ages. It's been a good while that you've been gone for yes. us. Welcome back. I'm back, fans. I'm back. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> and I'm, I'm here with back. the new lady. Again, as you see a different hairstyle every week. Oh, you guys it's, are getting it, on me. <laughs> asked me what's the name of my hairdo, and I said to get up and go. <laughs> it's never. It's been a busy day. Yes. <laughs> but um, it does look nice, as always. Thanks. Thank um, you. It is, I'm definitely glad to be here. Um, everybody, for some reason, is now drinking lemonade. I wonder <laughs> why. Beyonce has got everybody in an uproar. Um, it goes from baseball bats named hot sauce to lemonades to videos being uh, shown on HBO uh, on April 23rd. She made a, a release. Mm -hmm. So that was, you know, definitely a good, good thing that happened. Um, a lot of mind tight behind that, but, you know. It, you it, know, he, he had, actually had to bring me up on what's going on. Because <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard the song. I don't know what the song is about. And uh, so it's a lot. For, for individuals that are like me. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so Beyonce <laughs> did something new. There's no uh, eight track recorders, no, we don't have no CDs, no 36 inches, no 42s, right. no. Nah. Yeah, it's, she did everything virtual, like she did everything video. Um, she, all the music, she did a whole album, all music videos, released it to Apple. Like, it's all okay. on um, iTunes. She's a businesswoman. Yes. You know, and so, I yes. mean, big ups to her. Yes, it, it was, it was, <laughs> yeah, and she's, she's the number one. one. She does her thing, and we definitely can respect that. So, so. yes, definitely, that was a good thing. Yeah. But, there in other, other notes. There are things happening in the news. Yes. Um, and because we are right here in the city of Wilmington, mm -hmm. um, we would definitely not use this time to talk about some very important issues that are happening right here in our mm -hmm. city. Um, there's some things that we have to bring attention to. This is the bottom line news channel where we give you news that you can use, where mm -hmm. we educate and inform you about what's happening in and around your community. And so we want to talk about a topic that has been uh, trending on social media, in your homes, neighborhoods, corner stores, everywhere, all and around. Um, and that is the issue that happened on last Thursday at Howard High School of Technology. Um, between four young ladies and um, Amy uh, Joyner Francis. Yes. And it's crazy. Um, I think it, it's, it's more of a situation where it's now time for a response. It's now time for some action to go behind it. And if you don't mind, can you give us a little insight of actually what happened? Yeah, for those of you who are not aware, <laughs> have not been plugged in, 
Um, Amy Joyner Francis was a sophomore student, uh, 15 years of age, I believe, um, at Howard High School of Technology, um, where she was assaulted and beaten to death um, at 8.15 in the morning before her first period class um, by four other uh, women, or I'm sorry, not women, but no. young girls. Um, it, it's such a tragic situation. My heart is in my stomach as I speak of it um, because it's a hard thing to process. You send your daughter to school expecting for that to be a safe haven, a place where she's going to be focused on her education and then to learn um, that she's not just been assaulted but she's been killed. Um, is just devastating. Um, so that's a bit of the background um, on what happened on that day. Um, but since then, mm -hmm. there's been a lot of conversation about the topic. There's mm -hmm. been many of visuals held yes. in respect of Amy and her family, memorials set up yes. right there at the school grounds. Um, and then there's even, there's even some meetings um, mm -hmm. that have been set up for the parents. I think they begin on tomorrow. We'll give you more information about that. Yes. Um, and also grief counseling. Yes, um, definitely. That's being offered to the students, which I think, Shaquem, is so vital. Yes. Um, because, you know, in our community, we overlook mental healthness. Yes. Health, um, what am I saying? Mental healthness. Health, yes. health. mental health. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry, the issue gets me a little tied up. So um, we overlook that, you know, and grief is something that we can't avoid, you know. Uh, we've all had someone near and dear to us that we've lost. Yes. And um, getting through that process is very difficult. And um, especially as a child, yes. I mean, you can only imagine being 15 years old and your friend, one of your closest friends who you're so used to meeting up with in the morning is no, is longer. no longer there. How do you get through that situation? And so it's vital that these children have someone to talk to, a place to turn to, someone with a soft heart that is going to be a soundboard for the most part. Because what do you say in a situation like this? And it's crazy because I'm so glad that I have not only just have the wonderful and awesome, beautiful Deneen White here, but also she's a mother. You're a mother. You have a daughter. So I have a daughter and a son. I have a child. Yes. <laughs> and at the end of the day, you know, like you said, I'm a mother. Yes. And so regardless of the situation, you know, what really transpired, there's so many rumors, there's so many things being mm -hmm. spoken about. And I mean, the stories, it's just ridiculous because yes. most of it is happening between adults. Yes. You know, which is a direct reflection <laughs> on why children yes. behave the way they do. Mm -hmm. You know, the conversation that needs to happen on social media is not so much about pointing fingers, yes. Shaquem. It's more so a how do we get into the minds of our children mm -hmm. and start uh, putting some influence, positive influence in their life um, so that they can kind of start looking at situations a little bit different. Well, the thing is, you have to be speaking to children. And even though their ages may show 15, 16, 14, even 13, However, if their mindset is not on a child's mindset, if they are involved in adult conversation, if they are adult, involved in adult business, you might as well treat them as an adult. Because honestly, if you, if you think about it, kids my age, well, people my age, I'm not a kid, just let y'all know, but people my age, we grew up in the 90s. That was our childhood. We had Ren and Snippy. We had, it, it got to the point where, you know, when I, as I was growing up, my mother wouldn't even allow, allow me to watch Baby Boy at the age of 16. And the reason why is because she said a child needs to stay in a child's place. Right. And a child needs to make sure that they, you know, still continue their innocence, keep their innocence. Oh, I'm old school when it yes. comes to that. So I'm the, very traditional <laughs> in my household. I even dress my kids in Oshkosh. <laughs> <laughs> But it's the thing is, it's, it's, it's the way you're, 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 the way you're, you're nurtured and the way you are, are brought up in this mm -hmm. world. If you are brought up reckless, you are going to, most of the times, it, it's the result, end result is going to be reckless. You know, your mind is, it can be a weapon in some situations. If you don't control your thoughts, mm -hmm. your thoughts become things. So when you're speaking negatively to yourself, because mm -hmm. self-talk is something it's else. It's horrible. Let me tell you, 
um, you, you can kill your own spirit with self-talk. And so the reflection of what you're thinking and mm -hmm. the things that you're surrounding the, yourself with, the people you're surrounding yourself yes. with, the environments that you're, that you're uh, uh, subjecting yourself to, um, is a direct reflection of how you behave. Mm -hmm. I mean, no one is on a positive, positive lift mm -hmm. if all you are is around negativity yes. on a daily basis. Yes. And so, you know, as adults, it's not about pointing the finger and trying to identify who was wrong in this situation. Yes. Okay, all I have to say to that is that the investigation needs to hurry up. Yeah. Okay. Don't let it be an unsolved mystery, unsolved murder. Please. Another one of Wilmington's plenty of unsolved murders. Is, you can go on Facebook and it's a whole page for Delaware's unsolved murders. And it's crazy because you got these murders that date all the way back to the early 2000s, even to the 90s. And they're still unsolved. And it, honestly, Amy's, the, the situation that happened with Amy, it, I mean, I can't, I, I hate to say it this way, but we need to prevent that from happening. It happened, yes, it happened. It is a sad situation. It is a sad thing to happen. Yes, we are gonna be in grief about it. Yes, we are gonna feel some type of way about it. But until something is done to where things are changing, to where things can change within the city, mm -hmm. it's gonna to continue to happen. Things like this are gonna to continue to happen until things are actually changing, until things are done. And so how people... do they change? See, here's the thing, mm -hmm. is I can give you a book and you can read it from cover to cover mm -hmm. and you'll have the information, but implementation is the hardest thing for people to do. So you have to tell the people, how do you change? We can talk about change, but how do you implement change? Number one, it starts in your household with your yes. own children. What are you feeding them? What are you subjecting them to? Where are they hanging out? Are you going through their cell phones? Are you investigating, running through their, their bedrooms and finding out what they're involved in? Are you even paying attention to who they're hanging <laughs> with? All right, the type of children that they're hanging with. No, you can't control what happens in someone else's uh, household. However, you can control what happens in yours. And so when you set a standard for children and you let them know that there are rules that they have to abide by, then that kind of starts to begin the pivot in yes. their life, right? So when you start giving them things to do, making sure that they're involved in school activities, that they're trying out for baseball, that they're trying out for cheerleading, that they're involved into things that are going to help them grow and be more on a positive note, things that are going to direct their mind into another direction. Yep. Because let me see, an uh, idle mind is what? <laughs> the, devil's the devil's territory. Yes. These Playground. children yes. are sitting around doing absolutely nothing, just hanging out. Yes. Okay, and they're talking about, I mean, the time that they spent on social media going back and forth about what they were going to do to this child on the following day, they carried it out because guess what? They had nothing else to focus on. And you wanna... They had nobody over their shoulder trying to figure out mm -hmm. what they were involved in, what they were doing, while they were doing it. No one interceded. Also, mm -hmm. where was the presence in the hallway? We kind of touched on this. We only have a minute left. Yes. I can go on and yes, on. Yes, we can. Call me if you want to talk about it yes. but <laughs> there should have been <laughs> Some a monitors, presence yes. in the hallway a yes. presence not a not a, a security monitor a presence in the hallway mm -hmm. could yeah. have prevented this situation from happening you know I'm a strong believer is that you develop a system and then when things don't go right within that system you can kind of jump in and just tweak that piece okay mm -hmm. let's start tweaking Howard yes all right I'm a Howard graduate I'm very proud of, of going to Howard yep. I was Miss Howard 99 let's okay be clear. okay okay <laughs> so I, I love that school mm -hmm. and I loved it when I was there and I went even went back and I was the cheerleading coach for the varsity squad and you know it's some great things and people have come from Howard so there is not that Howard High School is a bad school it's just what we're doing the effect that we're having mm -hmm. on our generation yes. is not so good so adults let's self-reflect show up to that meeting tomorrow at Howard High School from 5 to 8 p.m. you will have to sign in it's not open to the public uh, I'm sorry it's the vote Tech district, uh, tech district yeah. that is hosting this uh, this meeting. So uh, go to Delaware Online. The information is there from 5 to 8 p.m. starting tomorrow and again on Wednesday. Thank you guys right. so much for tuning in. And yes. uh, we can continue this conversation because there's so many other there topics is. that we'll need to touch on when it comes to Definitely. violence and bullying and just everything that's happening with our, our younger generations. Yes. So 
Thank you so much for tuning in. And this is? This is The, the Bottom, bottom line. line.